What is the purpose of precious metals as an investment and should you have them in your portfolio? Precious metals are the typical and oldest example of an asset that doesn't need a trusted third party and which you can hold and transact with yourself. They are a so-called bearer asset, which means you can literally carry them in your pocket, meet a stranger on the street, give it to them and receive something in return without the need of a bank, credit card company or any other institution. Now, that also applies to precious stones, but I doubt I have a lot of people watching that would invest in diamonds or emeralds. So for the purpose of this video, I will keep the conversation to the main precious metals, which could be used both as money and investments. And those are gold and silver. Of course, other types of metals have been used as money as well, like copper, but this is hardly something you can invest in, so I will keep it aside for now. Precious metals have been used as money for thousands of years across different civilizations that had no contact with each other and across all continents. The most obvious example is gold. Gold has always been valued because of its scarcity, natural beauty and its indestructible nature. The yellow metal does not corrode, it can be melted and reshaped easily without losing its quality and it does not rust. There are literally golden coins and jewelry found in graves from thousands of years and if you simply wash and polish them a bit, they are as good as they once were. Because of that, throughout human history, all countries have used gold as a store of value and medium of exchange. Basically, gold was money right up until the 20th century when the current monetary system was invented. The short version of why that happened is the following. Gold, being a physical object, is really easy to steal and dangerous to move around in large quantities. Hence. As trade grew and became more complex, more and more people started storing it in centralized vaults and trading paper notes instead. Imagine it like this. If both you and I know there is one ounce of gold in bank X and you have the ownership of it, which can be proven with a note from the bank, then I can accept that note instead of the gold as a form of payment. To the bank, it doesn't really matter whether you or I will redeem it, and to you, it doesn't really matter whether you pay me with the note or the gold itself, because either way you part with your gold and receive what you want. Fast forward a bit and gold started to get centralized. At one point, the banks found out that not everyone is going to suddenly redeem all the gold at once, so they started lending more gold than they actually had using these receipts in order to make extra profit. As a result, the majority of the world's gold ended up sitting in centralized vault and people were using paper notes as money instead. Later on, in the 20th century, for reasons that are too long for me to explain here, the governments decided that they won't back the whole circulation of currency with gold, but only a part of it. And in 1971, the link between the US dollar and as a consequence all other currencies and gold was broken and we entered the era of the so-called fiat money, which are created entirely by governments. From that moment on, gold became purely an investment asset and was no longer money and the same applies to silver. This is the very brief and oversimplified story of how we got where we are today. As a result of that, you can no longer get a gold or silver coin and go to your local store to buy milk, but the usefulness of these precious metals as a store of value still remains. So, why are they still useful if they are not used as money? There are two main reasons for that, which we will explore now. The first reason is that ever since paper money was divorced from gold, its value has been dropping or outright disappearing over time. The average currency has lost almost all of its purchasing power in the last century and even the US dollar or the Swiss franc have lost 95% of their value. However, you could still roughly buy the same amount of oil or clothing with an ounce of gold today as you could a century ago, which means that gold preserves the purchasing power of its holders in the face of currency depreciation or even outright hyperinflation. However, if this is your only concern, there are far better assets to own which are economically productive, can grow more than gold or silver and can give you cash to live with. We will talk more about them later in the series. The second and main reason why precious metals are useful is the main reason they are in the insurance category of assets. The fact that you can self-custody them, meaning that you don't rely on a bank, centralized register or a credit card institution. If you own a piece of land in a country with corrupt government, the people in power can simply change the name of the owner of the land in the register and you no longer own it. But if you own gold coins and go to literally any small town in the world, you will find someone to sell them to without asking for anyone's permission. So basically the asset is permissionless and also preserves your anonymity. You can own gold without anyone knowing it. As a result, depending on where you live, if you fear a collapse of the financial system or an authoritarian government confiscating your assets, you can protect your wealth by owning precious metals yourself. 
A very important note here is that the second benefit of gold or silver, the self-custody element, is only valid if you, well, self-custody it. If you own a gold fund on the stock market, for example, you might get the benefit of protection of your purchasing power, but you are reliant on a third party to honor their promise to you and give you that asset when you need it. Same applies for storing your gold in a vault. For these reasons, I find it strange that people choose these strategies, and I'm advising you to never do either of these. If your government decides to confiscate assets, or more specifically, gold, where do you think they will go first? To all the banks and vaults that hold it. You might as well invest in stocks or real estate which at least produce something and give you rent or dividends. And if you think this won't happen in your country, check Executive Order 6102 from 1933, by which the United States government forced all citizens under threat of 10-year imprisonment to surrender their gold to the government. With that order, they kept owning gold illegal for 40 years. If that can happen in the USA, trust me, it can happen anywhere. Similar laws have been enacted in the UK, Poland, Australia, and other places. The reason for the confiscation was that at the time the dollar was backed by gold at 40%, and so during the Great Depression, the Federal Reserve, the central bank of the USA, could not print more money to fight the depression because it had no more gold to back it. By buying up people's gold at way lower than the market price, the government basically removed the constraint and the Federal Reserve could print more money. Anytime the government sees private ownership of gold as a threat, they won't hesitate to take it from you. Because of that, I believe that it is foolish to own precious metals in any other way than by holding them yourself. However, that introduces the big problem I mentioned in the beginning of my brief history lesson. Theft. If you simply hold it in your house, it's easy to be stolen. Which is exactly why I personally don't own any precious metals. They can be easily stolen in my home and holding them in a centralized vault seems stupid to me. But if you can find a clever way to do it, I believe a small allocation to gold or silver around let's say 5-ish percent of your portfolio would be reasonable. Now, with all that said, in the past 15 years, a digital cousin of precious metals has emerged whose goal is to fix the problem of theft and physical confiscation. And that cousin is called cryptocurrency, which is what we will talk about next. So click on the video on your screen and let's dive in.